Jeremy Gucci is an expert in exploiting chaos and embracing change. Most of us, we hate chaos. We hate it. But Jeremy, he thrives on it. He is the founder of Trendhunter.com, the world's largest site dedicated to innovation and trend spotting. It all began in 2006. He quit his cushy job at a credit card company to start this website dedicated to being on the cutting edge of what's cool. And since then, it has grown exponentially. He has over 50,000 members globally, over 1.5 million likes on Facebook, and almost a billion hits on the website. Yes, I said a billion, but he had to start somewhere. And here's how he got his start. Culture eats strategy for breakfast. He comes in the room, you know, so I was like, hey team, how's it going? He's big, he's loud, and he's um, really inspirational for the team. I, I've never met anybody that's inspired me as much as Jeremy has. Trend Hunter. Trend Hunter. The Trend Hunter. Trend Hunter. Trendhunter.com. Trendhunter.com. Tell us about the process of how you started Trendhunter.com. For me, I always sort of define myself as an entrepreneur at heart, but like so many entrepreneurs at heart, I didn't really know what my business idea was going to be. And yet every job I took then, I thought would lead me to inspiration. So I became a consultant thinking I'd look at different companies, but I still never got that idea. And I started running innovation in a business line at Capital One thinking other people's money would teach me what I wanted. But when I still hadn't figured it out, I actually started Trend Hunter as a community where people from around the world could come to share their business ideas. And then I hoped along the way that I would find mine. But as Trend Hunter took off, I never really had to pick. And so now I get to spend my whole time just looking at all these great things that are new and innovative. You study innovation and you study these epic time periods where great companies are launched. It tends to be something related to chaos. And if you look back in uh, history, you'll see that companies like uh, Google, Microsoft, Apple, Fortune Magazine, General Electric, Hewlett Packard were all founded during time periods of global economic recession. And it turns out that it's these periods of change that are fascinating and, and opportunistic because even when you have a downturn, people still buy things, but what they buy becomes a bit different. They start looking for other ways to you know, have their wonderful life, but maybe not spend the same amount. Or they, and that kind of change creates entrepreneurial opportunity. And that's one example, but in hundreds of different ways, chaos is really what creates opportunity and change. In some ways, Trend Hunter is chaos and that we're trying to say, look at all of the noise and the inspiration that's out there in the world and is there a way to filter it down or really try and identify the patterns within the chaos that are the emerging opportunities. So I think that chaos is a central theme in a lot of what we're trying to pursue and, and understand. The difficult thing for many professionals is that they want to be an entrepreneur, but they think of it as a decision where you must quit your job and go all in. And I took the approach that, hey, if I really want to do this, then I should be able to figure it out on my free time. So I would just really work to try and each day find a new part about the site that I could grow a little bit bigger and do a lot of experimentation. So one day I would try this approach to uh, getting new articles. Another day I would try this approach to marketing. And, and over time, through hundreds of little experiments, I started getting a group of people around the world that would uh, contribute articles and send me ideas every day and by constantly just trying to think about how to make this more useful for entrepreneurs and idea seekers I was able to catch on to some pretty cool trends myself. It used to be that trend spotting was about a guru, someone who picked newspaper articles that would influence the world. And that's great, but really the power of the people is what we're all about. So trying to take a crowdsourced approach. So how we've become so successful has really been by empowering a community of uh, now 100,000 people from around the world who find unique ideas in pop culture, marketing, design, and they come to Trend Hunter to share those ideas. But with our sort of presence, we're able to really give each of these trends and articles more exposure than they might get elsewhere. And so that's sort of been an interesting fuel, which is that people now come to us to find those cutting edge ideas and those cutting edge innovators come to us to try and share what they discover. Met Jeremy in the Queen's MBA program back in 2004. He's an entrepreneur um, at heart. Um, he has a very entrepreneur mindset, and I think um, he's been able to invest in the culture of this business, which is pretty much permeates in this in this office, and uh, being able to inspire others to new heights.
And trend hunter culture is one of our most important aspects that we're focused on. And we have an academy program where up to 10 people at any given time are not totally volunteering to get some money, but essentially they're volunteering their time to kick their career off here. So we realized that when you have that kind of program, it's very important to make the experience something that's very rewarding. So we have weekly beer parties, monthly fun days that include everything from dining in the dark to jet boating, and just in general, a culture where we're really trying to celebrate the people that are here and recognize the place that we play in their careers, kind of kick-starting their way uh, into the world. Three years ago, I was sort of in a rut. I was working at a law firm, not really knowing what I wanted to do, knowing that law was not something I ideally wanted to end up in. Um, so Trend Hunter had their first ever internship round and I thought, you know what, I'm going for it, I'm going to apply. So I applied for the internship round, it went amazingly, was so inspired, got hired on and then slowly uh, built up my expertise here and it's been amazing working with Jeremy and Marcus um, and everyone else on the team. What do you look for when you're hiring interns or people to work with you? We're looking for people who are enthusiastic. That's a huge thing for us. We're obviously an office full of really bubbly people. Um, we're looking for somebody who is entrepreneurial, somebody who can think outside of the box and get creative. And finally, I guess we're looking for somebody who has an open mind. Friend Hunter covers an array of things. One day you could be writing about um, a really cool campaign that's coming out that's using, you know, publicity stunts and flash mobs and all that. And then another day you could be writing about fashion that looks like, I don't know, bacon strips. So you need to be able to kind of wrap your head around a whole bunch of different things. If you're interested in writing or journalism or even just social media, you can actually sign up to the site and submit a trend and our editors will coach you through. So it's pretty neat that uh, we have 80,000 contributors all over the world doing that exact thing. And you know, they may not be uh, fluent in English or they may be dyslexic, but our editors will help make their work the best it is and then they'll get their trend out there and get those views. So it's great to start a portfolio just for free. What does it take to start a trend? It has to be simple, direct, and supercharged. And what we mean by that is you have to stress to people why it's unique. Why is this so cutting edge and cool? And it has to have that viral factor. Will it pass the I have to tell someone test? Or is it something that we've seen and heard of before? So it's all about the unique factor. We're very analytical at Trend Hunter, so uh, tracking our growth is very important to us and we know that we're going to have a billion views this summer, so that's huge for us and all of our um, 80,000 contributors that we have globally around the world. So it's a really big year for us, a really milestone year. I remember being in one of my marketing courses where the professor, Jay Handelman, started talking about that quest for cool. And the idea is that anything that is popular right now is mainstream. And so it doesn't really matter if you're a company innovating to know what your competitors already do and what people already want. You're looking for that fringe, the next big thing. And that quest for the next big thing turns out to be a whole industry where marketers and you know, professionals are looking for that big idea. And so really, Trend Hunter has two sides. One, which is the side everybody sees, which is trendhunter.com. But on the other side, Trend Hunter Pro, we're trying to synthesize through our billion views of data to identify these emerging opportunities for brands. And that's part of the business model. What's sort of, I guess, remarkable for me about Trend Hunter is that it combines all the things that I really love to do. And so the differentiation between a hobby and a business for me doesn't exist. This is what I really enjoy. And I think that I love solving problems, which is what I do when I'm trying to code something new. I like designing things, which is sort of some of the front end design and graphics. And then I love sort of working with a team or inspiring people, which happens both here at Trend Hunter and when I'm doing keynotes to inspire other people on, on how to be innovative. You need a suit. But you don't need just any suit, you need a half suit. All business up top, all party down below. An interesting place then that I have now decided to really try and push Trend Hunter this year is to 
sort of come connect things a little bit more. So I'd already done a lot of these keynotes and I had the award winning book, but then Trend Hunter was over here. And this year we're bringing a lot of that together with our Trend Hunter advisory program, which is to say that there are a lot of creative professionals that are using Trend Hunter for work. How do we empower them with a full suite of tools and sort of merge this all into one thing? So now we have a Trend Hunter advisory program where people get either trend experts here or myself to not only come in and out and do that one workshop, but actually sort of stay connected a little bit more with the brand. So that's what we're most excited about this year is really trying to push that academic advisory side of Trend Hunter. I think that if I really boil it down is that I haven't created a long-term plan for Trend Hunter because part of what makes this site fun and magical is that we react so quickly and we, we sort of move without a plan in some senses. We know our grand vision of where we want to go, but we like to know that we're flexible enough to change on a weekly or monthly basis when something inspires us. It's just a lot of fun. You come in each day, do what you want to do, and create a lot of value. It's pretty cool waking up in the morning knowing you can pretty much inspire the creation of you know, thousands of new products or entrepreneurs. Right now there are so many brands and marketers that are interested in social media and online publication in that digital world, but it's not taught anywhere. There's very few experts. Canada in some ways is not on par with you know, America when it comes to understanding this sort of thing. So that's kind of a neat role that we've started to play in Toronto and in Canada in general.